you know, exposure management is the practice of proactively and selectively identifying, assessing, and mitigating exposures across an organization's entire digital attack surface. And it involves, you know, understanding um, possible access points and attack vectors, prioritizing the risk they present, uh, and implementing measures to protect the most critical threats, right? And the ultimate goal is to maintain actual exposures at an acceptable risk level to the business. So, um, so Helen, maybe we ought to just talk a little bit more about how exposure management is different from vulnerability management, because I think the two get really confused. Um, you know, exposure management takes a much more holistic, you know, approach. Um, so it's leveraging risk-based prioritization of exposures um, and validation of identified prioritized exposures to deliver, you know, that comprehensive view of an organization's, you know, entire digital attack surface, right? So it gives that full visibility of assets like servers, endpoints, mobile devices, IoT devices. And by the way, you know, it's interesting with IoT devices. I'm just going to do an aside here is that um, I remember going back about five or six years ago, the number one vector for botnets, bad botnets at that time was cameras. Um, these these digital cameras people because they just weren't keeping them up to date um, and that's still a big threat you know these IOT devices actually are one of the big areas here that 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 create these these threats but there's websites and exposure and the exposures they can create so um, and those by the way those include software exposures missing patches misconfigurations weaker compromised credentials and more so so it's a big attack surface you know and the, the big question is you know how do you know how do organizations get their hands around all this in a way that gives them that visibility, both from the you know from the business, what's the impact to the business, and what are the what are the chances that these you know that these vulnerabilities will get exploited, right? And kind of marries those two concepts together. Does that hopefully that makes sense in terms of how that's being explained? I, I agree with you, um, Carl. You know, I've done many risk assessments for companies of different sizes in various industries. Uh, most companies have a good understanding or a basic understanding of their internal vulnerabilities, but challenge with risk associated with third party or suppliers oftentimes. One company, right, I worked with thought they had 350 endpoints. It turns out to be over 3,000 endpoints. And that kind of gap is not surprising, right, to you and people like us. Uh, so exposure management, as you said, uh, considers shadow IT, third-party risks, misconfigurations, and interconnected vulnerabilities that may not individually score high, but collectively pose significant threats, right? So this is why it's so important, this you know, exposure management is so important and critical because it ties the te technical risk to business outcomes enabling organization to prioritize actions effectively, right? In the, the old way of just, hey, here's assessment, here's a report, here's all the vulnerabilities you have to take action upon, it's just not good enough anymore, right? Exposure management points out exactly the, the action you need to take upon and then really guide you through that process. And to me, that's really why, and then also provides a continuous monitoring and a dynamic assessment of their attack surfaces. As you said, there are so many attack surfaces today. The camera today could be on a pair of sunglasses or it could be on a pair of shoes. So all those are, you know, things have evolved. The way we live have evolved because of advancement of technology and then just have the human eyes to, you know, really capture all these endpoints, moving parts is not enough anymore. It's not fast enough, right, to keep up with the ever-changing uh, the new world. And then the other thing you mentioned about, um, it, it's really evolving and hopefully it would be automated with AI integration in the longer term, right? That can help organizations to automate the task and catch things before um, the, the surface attack happens. Yeah, that, I mean, th that, that's such, those are such good points you're making there, especially on, uh, you know, AI is that it, it, it's actually, but, you know, it actually creates a bigger attack surface because AI, you know, obviously can find ways to to mimic humans and do things like phishing or other attacks or, you know, look for vulnerabilities and attack based on that. But they also can be a great tool for helping you better understand your attack surface and help digest some of this information. And that that's really what it comes down to is, you know, getting that view or that visibility into that threat landscape in a way that's contextual to the business and the risks that you're willing to take in the business, right? And, you know, with that, there's, there's four kind of essential um, principles 
with with exposure management that that tries to address just what you're talking about. One is the first one was a great example of not understanding you know, basically, what are all your assets within the organization? And these assets can be internal, they can be external, they can be websites, they can be contractors, they can be a whole number of things. But any place on your digital landscape where there, there is software running is a potential exposure and a potential problem for you. And that those need to be taken into account. Um, the other key differentiation, I would say, with exposure management is that this notion of risk-based prioritization. Because there's a big difference between, say, looking at the, the, the level of a threat, meaning like you have a CVS, a CVE, so a common, you know, basically a critical vulnerability um, that NIST has, you know, say published. And let's say it gives a common vulnerability security score of 10, which is the highest there can be. Well, that may be that, that, that that's, the, you know, that relates to the opportunity to, to exploit that vulnerability, but it doesn't take into account the actual risk to your infrastructure or your business, right? So you don't really know how to weigh that in with other vulnerabilities or things you're trying to address. And that's exactly what risk-based prioritization means. Um, the other aspect that ties to that is this notion of like outcome-based metrics. So this is that kind of what you were saying is that kind of continual assessment. So, you know, you look at your threat landscape, and then you look at, you know, really the opportunities to be exploited. And then you take those outcomes and you feed that back in. So it's a closed loop. It's, 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 it's continually evolving as your threat surface evolves. And then it's providing you that information then to go off um, and deal with that. And then finally, which I think is super important, is that, um, and we talk a lot about this in the report, is this notion of silos within organizations. Um, and you could have multiple silos. You can be uh, generally a lot of times security is siloed um, away from, let's say, IT. That is, they, they're, they're looking for threats and risks. They're using, you know, they look at, you know, in their narrow view, they're looking at, oh, well, what is the critical vulnerability score here, the CBSS score? Um, what is its chance to be exploited? But they may not necessarily be fully and, you know, understand the business outcomes or what the business is trying to achieve. And likewise, IT is often focused more on, you know, building business, you know, logic into their systems and driving the business forward. And so there can be a decoupling. And then finally, when you start looking at, like, say, you have business units that are operating, they'll have different requirements and needs based upon, you know, what they're providing within that business, right? And that that needs to be taken into account when you look at your overall threat landscape. You know, and then finally, you know, I think ultimately one of the other key points is that um, organizations have to decide what their what their risk tolerance is. And um, Helen, we can talk more about this because this is in the report. And this, remember we said, um, 